Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. Thank you for stopping by. This story is written for intermediate English learners. Ready? Let's get started. B1, B2 English Story The Heat Wave Kate grew up on the border of England and Scotland. She was used to bracing winds and cooler weather. She loved to go away to warm countries and feel the sun on her skin. She always said that when she grew up, she would move away to Spain or Italy or the south of France and live somewhere by the sea. She longed for the day when she didn't look out of her window and see grey, dull skies. Of course, sometimes the weather was okay on the borders, but it was nothing like it was in the south of England. She had visited London once and couldn't believe how different the climate was. Kate had heard on the news that a heat wave was coming and that everyone should prepare for it by making sure they shut their windows, blinds and curtains. Kate rolled her eyes at the news report. She was convinced she wouldn't need to do any such thing. The next morning, Kate woke up and to her surprise, when she opened her curtains, the sky was blue. She smiled the biggest smile. This was what she had always wanted. She ran downstairs and went out into her garden. She sat down on the grass and looked up to the sky. She couldn't see one cloud. It was glorious. It was the first time in a long time that she had felt warm at seven in the morning. After a few minutes of wistfully admiring the sky, she decided to head back inside and get ready. She had a shower, made some breakfast and tried out her new fancy coffee machine. Kate was in her final year of university and was working away on her dissertation. She had a couple of short online lectures and a meeting with her tutor and then she was free for the day. She couldn't wait. As the day wore on, her room became hotter and hotter. She turned on her fan but it did next to nothing. She started to get hot and sweaty. She wasn't ready for this. Maybe the news report was right, after all. At 4pm, she turned off her laptop, went downstairs and out into the garden. As she opened the door, it was like she was hit with a wall of heat. It took her breath away. She rushed back inside and drank a big glass of water. She was in shock. She had never known the weather to be so wonderfully hot and it was meant to get even hotter. She went up to her room and liberally applied some sun cream. Kate was very fair-skinned and burnt easily, so she had to be careful. She used Factor 50. Then she found her hat went back to the kitchen, made herself a cool cocktail and went out into the garden with a book. She only sat in the sun for an hour and then she went back inside. She started to feel a little strange. She was dizzy and had a headache and started to feel sick. When she checked her phone, she saw it was hotter than she had realised. It was 36 degrees, much hotter than she'd ever known in the UK. She
she sat down on her bed and took deep breaths. Did she really want to live in a warm country if this was how her body was going to react to warm weather? She realised she had got sunstroke. She drank a full glass of water and had a nap. She woke an hour later to her housemates coming back from university. She felt a lot better, but still felt a little dizzy. Her flatmates made her dinner, and they watched a film together. The house felt very humid, and they knew they were in for a hot night. The problem with their house and most houses in the UK is that aircon isn't a thing. So when hot weather comes, the only things people have to cool them down are fans. After the film, Kate had a cool shower and went to bed. She didn't sleep well. She tossed and turned all night. Her fan gave hardly any relief as the air was so hot and close. She had set her alarm for 7.30 as she wanted to make her housemates breakfast to say thank you for looking after her the day before. She got up and dressed, went downstairs and started to prepare pancakes. She opened the door and was hit with the warm air from outside. According to her phone, it was already 28 degrees. She had never known anything like it, except for when she went on holiday. She decided that she wouldn't make the same mistake as the day before. Instead, she would go out and have breakfast with her friends in their garden and then she would stay in the house and work on her dissertation all day. She didn't want to get sunstroke again. Breakfast was lovely, but Kate and her friends were already getting too hot. They made their way inside closed up the curtains, blinds, doors and windows and all started on their university work. As the day went on, it got hotter and hotter. No matter how many cold drinks Kate had or how many times she washed her face with cool water, she couldn't get comfortable with the heat. She started to wonder whether life in a hot country really would be for her and she started to realise that she was contented living in a cooler place. Of course, she reminded herself again that she would have aircon abroad but where's the fun in living somewhere hot if it's too hot to go outside? Kate loved to be out and about and just these couple of days of extreme heat were too much for her. That night, as the temperatures were still sky high, she looked out of her window and saw the beautiful rolling hills and little towns in the distance and realised that she was happy where she was. Life isn't always greener on the other side. Let's go through some of the vocabulary from this story. Burnt. To be burnt. To be burnt is to be destroyed or made black by fire or heat. You can get sunburn if you lay in the sun too long and your skin will go red and might be painful. Dizzy. Dizzy. Dizzy is feeling as if everything is turning around and that you are not able to balance and may fall over. Extreme. Extreme. Extreme is very large in amount or degree. React. React. To react is to act in a particular way as a direct result of something else. 
you can have good or bad reactions to things. Relief. Relief. Relief is a relaxed, happy feeling that you get because something bad has not happened or a bad situation has ended. Rush. To rush. To rush is to go or do something very quickly. Convince. To convince. To convince is to persuade someone of something. Admire. To admire. To admire is to find someone or something attractive and pleasant to look at. Nap. Nap. A nap is a short sleep in the daytime. Dissertation. Dissertation. A dissertation is a long piece of writing that you usually have to do as part of your university course. Tutor. Tutor. A tutor is a type of teacher. To realise. To realise. To realise is to understand a situation, sometimes suddenly. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story and the vocabulary explanations. Thank you for stopping by and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Get productive and check out our language learning productivity packs on Etsy. Use code YouTube10 for 10% off. You can find the link in the description box below. See you soon!